interesting messaging. The president called it Putin's price hike, of course, laying the blame squarely on the person who started this war, Vladimir Putin. Blame works as a way of deflecting those unwanted feelings onto ourselves. Hey, don't blame the pollsters, blame our founding fathers. By the end of this evening, I'm gonna be blamed for everything. To blame the main hack on criminals. They blame overcrowding. When he blamed many sides for hatred. Tonight, the blame game among Democrats beginning. The social distancing policies around the holiday may be the blame. 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 All right, so there is just so much that is happening and I just have to delete the noise. Here's what we should be afraid of. Here is to blame for it. At one moment, we're blaming a leader. The next moment, it is technology, it's weather, it's traffic. There is so much noise that is happening that it's just overwhelming and hard to keep up. Recently, we've blamed individuals for rising prices. In years past, the search was on for who to blame for the food on our plates. And in 2011, did you know that the economy was blamed for dog napping? And my favorite sport can't even escape the blaming culture. And just like most things, we can't agree on who to blame for the lockout. I've even gotten caught up in this myself, blaming my wife recently for throwing away an important piece of paper that honestly I should have taken care of months ago. But why do we blame and at what expense? Blame is just an easy way that comes up very automatic automatically for all of us pretty much to uh, release that that uncomfortable distress, right? So it's just like a boom, I just said this, I'm blaming this, so that makes me in the moment feel better. Blame becomes automatic in some scenarios. This stems from fear or protecting one's ego. It's all about protecting my ego. If I can convince myself that I'm all good, and in fact, you're the problem person that's all bad, then I feel better about myself. There is really good research that shows that, you know, blaming is criticism and uh, we don't respond well to criticism. You know, we, uh, there is no such thing as constructive criticism. I know that's a thing that we often hear. Blame is really about not taking accountability and again, pushing things out externally. It's about having to take that look within and hold yourself accountable. Because at the end of the day, when there is conflict, there's always two sides of the coin. Communication can make or break any relationship, but once blame enters, it can eventually be set on autopilot. Many people don't don't think when they do that, right? It's just an automatic response that can happen. Uh, we feel attacked somehow and we want to blame back. And I think for most of us, it's a really hard, change is difficult, right? It's hard to change. Work environments are another common place for this. A good example of fear meeting the ego. When they're in the workplace, it wasn't me, it was my coworkers fault or my boss is racist and it causes people never to look at themselves, right? How can we grow emotionally as people? How can we improve as a society if we're not willing to look at ourselves and, and take accountability for our actions? And so blame, it works again underneath the surface, but if we're not aware of it and if we don't make efforts to change, uh, we can find ourselves as a society in a very, very dangerous, in a very, very sad and painful place uh, in the future. The trouble is, is that you don't hold yourself accountable for your consequences of your behaviors. You continue believing a myth that you have no flaws. It's not you, it's them. I get to hold on, my ego gets to hold on to this idea of me being all good. It's not my fault, it's your fault. Remember, it's not me, it's you. If I take responsibility, if I take a look at what is in my control and try to change those things, Sometimes that's a very scary thing based on people's experiences of the past, right? Maybe they've tried in the past and they were, and it was bad, right? They punished, they were abused, things like that. And of course, so our nervous system's not gonna allow us to go there anymore, right? It's like, nope, thank you, I'll stay here, right? This is safe, taking the victim role, it feels safe for my nervous system. Blaming gives us a sense of control even when things are out of our hands, like gas prices. Placing blame on a single person, group, or even a pandemic allows us to feel that we are doing something and having others agree with us adds to the ego and connects us. We want to feel connected to others and if the way we connect is by blaming, right, then that's a connection. Not the healthiest one, but it works in that moment, right? We can uh, connect on this um, topic of blaming so-and-so. Even if our leaders are not taking responsibility or your partner or boss or whoever, right? Can we do our part? Can each individual say, okay, well, I'm just gonna do my part in learning how to take uh, you know, accountability to be more vulnerable. So as the blame game plays out in households, classrooms, boardrooms, or even the White House, 
recognizing and confronting it is key. And I think it becomes a difficult task to uh, take accountability when we make mistakes in life because it causes us to feel like maybe we're not so good at what we thought we were good at. Again, everyone wants to be liked, nobody wants to be hated.